Greetings and welcome back to another brand new spanking playthrough here on EPG Plays. Um, today we're actually going to knock off another. And you got you guys can see the lines there. That's uh, analog interference. So this is real hardware, folks. Real Dreamcast. Uh, I haven't played any Dreamcast games on the show before, so I thought. Well, I kind of spent like $80 on a brand new VGA box. I'm like, well, let's play a game from the Dreamcast. Why don't we? And there are only really two Dreamcast games I really heard about or care about. Those being the Sonic Adventure games. So we'll start with the first one. Uh, but uh, I decided that it would probably be a good idea to have a co-commentator for this playthrough. Uh, someone who I've known for quite a long time and who I've worked with a lot in the past. Introduce yourself, kind sir. Uh, well, I'm not Alec the SideQuest Gamer. And Alec Alge the SideQuest Gamer will never be on this on this show. Or on the podcast. Or on the podcast, for that matter. Speaking uh, what's of your name, the podcast, gentlemen? if you ever watched that podcast and you wondered, Oh, jeez, who's that guy that sounds like a dying hyena? That's me. I'm that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, we have. Fucking love this intro. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is certainly very. Um. I'm trying to think of the word for it, because bombastic is probably not the right word, but it is. It definitely caught my um, 11 year old's attention span. It caught, it caught my attentions. That's what I'm <clears> trying to say. Yeah, this was the first video yeah. game I have ever played. I was probably about four years old when I played it, so I didn't know what it. I didn't know what a Mario was, let alone a Sonic. So, like, I'm at my cousin. A Sonic. <laughs> I'm at my cousin's house, and uh, she's playing this game, and I see like this intro come up. I'd never seen anything like it, and I was just like, I was fucking blown away. And I played it, yeah. and then I was just, I was hooked. It's great. So, Ryan, are you saying that you like Sonic Adventure? Oh no, it's fucking terrible. Worst game ever played. Zero out of ten. <laughs> Sonic is dead! <laughs> he should stay dead while he cries, <laughs> Sonic Team! Well, he's not dead because of Sa Sonic Mania. Uh, well, Sonic Team is... is bad. Really the internet said so. Right. <laughs> uh, well, so this this fine gentleman with me is Ryrul. Yeah, he is a reviewer in his own right who has his own channel. That you guys could all check out. He's working on a new review right now, actually. Or am um, I? Or is he? There's or only, is he? <laughs> there's only one way to find out. If you hit that subscribe button, I can't promise uh, you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, Ryan here, we've worked with each other before, we've actually met in real life. Now, uh, by the way, that's SmartX1, that's the Frame Meister, so you know this is real. <laughs> this is not an emulator, folks. Um, uh, he and I have actually met in real life, uh, so we're, we're not just internet friends, we're friends, period. And he and I have been, uh, if, if any of you have ever seen the Unverse cast, uh, by the way, I'm including all of these for for big in particular, because there's kind of a <laughs> nice bit of information there that is included in these little tutorials. I'll be showing off these tutorials for Knuckles and Rouge as well when we play Adventure 2. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, Brian, he, he and I are both on the Inverse cast along with uh, Kingdom, Clanad, King K, and um, Haydox. So he and I have uh, worked with each other before. I know. Do you want to talk over cutscenes or? Uh, we can if you want. I think everyone's seen them at this point. Yeah, and let's just say uh, many of these cutscenes we will be seeing more than once. Mm. Uh, so if you miss it the first time, uh, you can see Eggman grab the flicky three more times. <laughs> uh, so it'll it'll be all right, fam. Oh yeah, this is happening. The First, there we have our three. The first 3D line reveal of, of Ryan Drummond as <laughs> Sonic, who I think is still my favorite one. You think it's what? Uh, it's still my favorite voice for Sonic. Mm. Mine's Jason. Really? Yeah, I just think he fits it better. Like I think Ryan, he just sounds a bit too extreme. 
Except maybe in Sonic Adventure 2, he sounds pretty tame there, but I think Jason in, like, Unleashed... Oh, really? Yeah. I, I actually felt like he was more tame in this first game. Nah, I mean, it's just like, oh, yeah! This is gonna be fun! This is happening! Hmm. Just letting Knuckles pilot the shuttle on the way over was more dangerous than you could ever be. Come on, you big drip! Where you going? Yeah, the, his performance, though, in this game overall seems a lot more toned down. You think so? But, yeah. You know, yeah, hmm. I, I feel like he got a lot more silly in the later games, in Adventure 2 and Heroes. See, I thought he sounded just fine in Adventure 2 and in Heroes, he's just full-on cheeseball. Yeah, but that's that's what I mean. It's like, in this game, it feels like the, he's taking himself a bit more seriously in Adventure 1. Hmm. He still has a couple cheesy ones, but that's mostly in this cutscene. Like, after this point, he gets pretty... You know... Other cutscenes later. Yeah, I guess. That makes sense. I still like uh, Jason more. Like, Jason uh, in uh, Unleashed, I still think has, like, the best voice acting for any Sonic game. Well, not, may not maybe any Sonic game, but, like, that is the best Sonic voice, in my opinion, is Unleashed. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like Jason just fine, but there's something about Ryan Drummond that's so infectiously... Sonic. I don't know how to put it. Uh, and he doesn't I, sound like an elf in this game, or a fairy, or I think whatever it is that Roger just is doing. Blinded by nostalgia. I I don't know what to tell you. I, I come back to these games on a frequent basis, and I'm like, this is this 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 voice is Sonic to me. I love how pudgy um, he looks too. Like his, punchy and visceral. Yeah, like his his body is literally just a ball, with arms and legs. Mm. Come on, you big drip! Yeah, he, he got going? taller in later games, I think. Mm. And in the re-releases. Yeah, in 06 in, in uh, particular, they wanted to make him taller and have his quills be longer because they thought that would to, be uh, cool. to, to make uh, the Sonic uh, <laughs> more human and also more cooler. <laughs> more cooler. <laughs> to attract uh, like there's, wider there's a wider audience. To, to uh, no, uh, bring in the uh, new Ooh, consumer. And then we have Dean Bristow as Eggman. God bless that man. Rest his soul. Now he will always be he, Eggman to me. Mike Pollock is great, but Dean Bristow is Eggman. You see that we're like opposites, which is part of why I brought you on for this playthrough, actually. But I mean, you know, you, know, you are but, right. You think Sonic Adventure Two is good, and you know, I think Sonic Adventure One is good. You're clearly wrong. <laughs> well. Okay, so yeah, let's let's dress the elephant in the room in that regard. There are subtitles you you guys can read, uh, uh, but I I think Sonic Adventure Two is a much much better game than the first one, and I've said that numerous times in many videos and all over the place. So you guys know that, but uh, Ryan here is of a different opinion, and you know. As, as far as I know, Sonic Adventure is your favorite platformer, Ryan? 3D platformer. Yes. Okay, 3D platform. And uh, you you would definitely prefer it to the to its uh, successor. As in Sonic Adventure 2? It's, yeah, that sequel, I mean. Yeah. You know. I mean, I get why people like Sonic Adventure 2 more, but you know, people are wrong. Sonic Adventure 1 is clearly objectively the best game in the series. <laughs> don't fight me. Don't at me. <laughs> well, I can't at you because you don't have a Twitter anymore. And I have no <laughs> regrets. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't say I blame you. Sometimes it... Oh, you just fell uh, through the floor. <laughs> did I? Yeah. I missed it. <laughs> well, there's... Okay, so when I played this game, because... Uh, when I when I when I do play Adventure 2, and I'll probably bring a Ryan along for that as well. I plan on showing off a bunch of stuff and trying to, you know, I was trying to go over the bridge. But <laughs> you just fucking I, spun but around. My the point screen. is, when I when I played these levels, I was trying my best to show off some of like the side stuff, uh -huh. and to and I was not deliberately looking for any glitches or anything. <laughs> Like, I just played the levels the way that I I would. 
Oh. Because I wanted to, you know, give this game its fair shake on the channel. But uh, Just so. as I intend to give the second one its fair shake. But that was shake. that was a glitch. Clearly, this game is unplayable. We're just well, if you made. thought that was that was bad, you you should weigh it. Oh god. It's uh, it's it's not that bad, but it is. It was very interesting. I'm like, oh, that's kind of neat. Is, is it happening uh, right the, here with the bridge or what? Yeah, it'll be with the bridge because I guess if you tried to spin dash your way through this, oh uh, yeah, you, you don't you you won't be fast enough. Yep. And then he'll get Ye you. Yep. <laughs> but Never. I somehow managed what? to salvage <laughs> that. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. I was not looking for that. I swear. And if you notice, the I ramp just... was like flat. Normally, the ramp's supposed to be yeah. going upwards, but no, that was just flat. It was flatter oh, than yeah, Knuckles' voice some... in Sonic Adventure 2! Ew! Uh, well, I, I guess I'll funny. have to, when I play him again, I'll have to, in this game, I'll have to pay attention to see if I see any significant difference. Hmm. Wow. That's funny, though. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely was not deliberate, and I also tried to show off some spin dash jump opportunities. Mm. Because a lot of people like to talk about that, so sure, I'll be creative with that and, you know, try to work that in. It's like doing the, the the diving thing in a hat in time, where it's just like, you do two jumps, then you dash, and then you cancel that, so you get an extra jump. It's like that kind of feeling for me, where it's just like, it, it it's something that's so simple, but it provides, like, a lot of experimentation. Like, you can do a lot of stuff with the spin dash jumping. Which is why, it's one of the reasons why I like this game a lot more than Sonic Adventure 2. Because the spin dash is so instantaneous. With Sonic Adventure 2, you have to charge, but with this, you can just, like, press and you're off. Yeah. Uh, but there are- I will retort oh! by saying that there are, are plenty of spin dash jump opportunities in Adventure 2. Oh, absolutely. That I try to show off. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's just- the only real difference is you hold down the button instead of just tapping it, you know? Mm -hmm. But yes. I will say that I don't know why- the, for so long with these Sonic games, like all the way up to a six, why they felt the need to put everything on one button. Even Unleashed. Come on. The homing attack and well, the I air mean, boost. Yeah. And the like boost boost. We have all, like, even going back to, like, Sonic 2, we have all these buttons on the controller. And, by the way, look at that dithering. Uh, it's not obvious for Ryan because he's watching it in 360p plebeian quality. Actually, I'm uh, on my uh, my good laptop, so it's it's in high quality. Well, I mean, the video itself is 360p. Yeah. What? When the people see the final video, it'll be in 1080p, and it'll be like perfect integer scale VGA OSSC Framemeister. Goodness. Techno uh, but Ryan has to watch it in plebeian quality for now. It's okay. I'm used to it. I played PS2 games in 480i. Gosh dang it. Ugh. I just had a miniature heart attack when you when you mentioned the demon resolution well, what do you, to me just now. Uh, what do you think the PS2 game that I'm recording? It's uh it's in 480i. I do not I don't know how you do it. I honestly I can't. Just, I, don't I can't have even look at 40i in on my PVM. <laughs> it looks better on a CRT, but it's still, it's just like, why would I only want to have half the frame when I can have the full frame every VI? I don't understand. Mm. It's called being authentic, Michael! Now, here's the good news about SA1 and 2 in both Streamcast games, is that pretty much every game on the console you could force to 480p. And I take it it looks Including better. this one. Well, yeah, of course it does. It's 40p versus 40i, you know? Mm. And, yeah, so, it, and uh, I find that I get much better results with the Dreamcast's VGA than I do with component on the consoles going forward. Like, whatever I, whatever I play, I don't have GameCube component cables because they cost more than my kidney. <laughs> yeah, they're like uh, 200 bucks a pop. They're like three hundred dollars. They're really expensive. Oh, so they went up then. I, yeah, like I hear that the quality of those cables for GameCube games, in particular, is much higher. And I imagine I could get something that looks as crisp and aliased as this uh, on a GameCube with those cables, but I don't know for sure. Honestly, what I heard with the with those cables is that you're better off just getting cables for the Wii and just playing it on the Wii. 
Like it's hardly well, noticeable. Yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. Well, that's that's what I do with um, GameCube games. Mm -hmm. uh, but like it's like I think the digital analog converter chip on the Wii is not as good as the one that comes with the GameCube component cables. Right. So it it means that even when I'm using the OSSC to get like that really crisp looking image and sampling it like exactly correct, I still get like. Um, you know when you record with components on the on the Elgato, how there are like these two stripes on the side of the image. Mm. It, it, that's because it, because of the way that the it's digitally sampling the analog signal. It, like it's kind of like two images that are slightly overlapping each other, and so like that the pixel kind of column on the edge of each side of the of the frame is kind of like that. I get that sort of result with component cables, even on the OSSC. Except for the Xbox. The Xbox has really good component. And I guess I think it's because you can use whatever cables you want. Um, and Because the Xbox has that little box you plug in. Kind of like the Dreamcast does, actually. And... I can get really crisp looking images out of Xbox games, but I can't get that for PS2 and game... In, the Wii in particular. It also upsets there's the a lot Game of games keeps... that run in HD, like 720. Yeah, but I imagine the frame rate's probably pretty crappy uh, on Xbox. I think some of them actually run at a, um, like, I know there's like a snowboarding game, and I think that either runs at a 30 or 60 consistent. Okay, I, well that's impressive then, but... I could be mistaken, mean, don't I'm... quote me on that. Yeah. And the Xbox has pretty good 480p support as well. Um, and like I said, I find that the 480p on Xbox actually looks better than its contemporaries. But again, I can't speak for GameCube directly because I have I don't have the expensive uh, cables. black market cables <laughs> that you had to special order from Nintendo back in the day. Mm -hmm. They weren't sold in stores. Yep. You had to like ask for them, so, which is why they're so uncommon and there aren't third party equivalents yet. By the way, I'm talking to all the NPCs because this game has hubs and NPCs to talk to. And some of them, uh, most of them just kind of say stuff, you know, but there are a couple of little side plots mm. or subplots going on that you can find out about if you talk to the NPCs. Like, we saw that guy by Twinkle Park over there with his girlfriend. And he was, uh, uh, he has a sub. Yeah. What? No, no, no. I, he has I was, a subplot. Yeah. And then there's also the girl with the burger shop. Yeah, I show her off one. too. Uh, she's, you know, that's, that's kind of interesting, but. Uh, the character models for these NPCs... Timeless. Timeless. Flawless. Oh, oh yeah, they mm. they look um, almost as good as the final boss in Strong Bad's cool game for attractive people. If it isn't Sonic! God damn it. Oh, Dean Bristol's voice is so wholesome. And you'll be invincible and work for me! Behold my floating masterpiece, the Egg Carrier! The Egg Carrier! But it pales comparison to the powers of chaos! Adieu! Adieu! We meet Adieu. again, Adieu. We meet my again, friends! friends. <laughs> <laughs> now, what do you want? He's having so much fun. I know! But he's also kind of taking the, the role seriously at the same time. So it's, it's like. Uh, I, I'll get into more of my negatives with this game later. I'll try to be positive for now, but <laughs> Eggman's certainly a highlight. He's fun. Hmm. He's fun to watch. So, Axel, let me ask you a question. Because um, I know the problem, or one of the problems that you have with this game is um, the repetition. I have to constantly, you know, fight the same bosses over and over again and watch the same cutscenes over and over again. What is the order that you play in? Uh, well, for this playthrough, I've decided I'm going to leave Tails for later. Okay. Just to minimize that, because Tails is basically 90% the same as Sonic's. Right. And usually I do play them back to back, uh, but this time I've decided to make things easier for myself and for our viewers. I'm going to be saving Tails for later. What I and normally like, do whenever yeah. I play this game, um, I do Sonic first, obviously. I do Big, just to get it out of the way. And then I do Knuckles, Amy, Gamma, and I save Tails for last. And notice that like yeah, it doesn't make um, the story as repetitive. Hey, I'll play with you some other time. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll cert. I'll. I'm certainly willing to minimize that for myself. Mm hmm. 
because you know if that's an option it's kind of like how the the backtracking in spyro 3 a lot of it you could avoid if you just be smart about it right so i'm willing to do that for this game as well but you know still uh we'll, we'll get to that in the in the later playthroughs by the way the loading times yeah are kind of long they're not as long as the Crash Insane Trilogy, where you have to wait like 20 goddamn seconds of Aku Aku winking at you while these <laughs> big neon well, yellow letters saying so loading bump, bump around. By the way, if you look closely, you can oh, see no. that there are two claws. Yep. I'm, I imagine that's supposed to get cut off in the overscan area on a CRT, but because Chaos. we're not playing this on a CRT, we can see the full frame. Oh my god, Eggman actually does have an arm. Like, if you look close enough, you can actually see, like, a really, oh, no. like, Isn't super thin, super I tiny arm. Why does a man that fat have arms so skinny? That's, that's a good question. It makes no sense. Oh, yes. it's just <laughs> By the way, that, that Eggman character model. <laughs> mm. Timeless. Perfect. Yeah. Look at them textures. Mm. Those I especially <laughs> love how his mouth doesn't move. <laughs> it is just a flat white texture. Oh, just wait till you get to uh, the Egg Viper. That model oh, is just even wait till better. you get to the intro cutscenes in Gamma's playthrough, where you get to watch him walk around outside yep. of his Eggmobile. So, is this uh, the video that we're watching? Is this the entire Sonic playthrough? Yep. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. I gotta watch closely to how you fight the Egg Viper. We'll we'll get more about him. I beat him in there. one try. You beat him in one try. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it takes me more. Usually, yeah. You, the trick is. We'll we'll talk about that boss later. But yeah, we'll talk about. Here's it the crux of our Sonic plot: is that Eggman wants the emeralds, and I'm gonna call him Eggman because he's been called Eggman for over twice as long as he was ever called Robotnik, and even then, only in the U.S. Oh, damn. Uh, probably, or maybe in Europe too, I don't remember. Uh, but, yeah, he was like Egg Robotnik for like eight years, only in the West, and then it's been like 16 plus years since Sonic Adventure that he's been called Eggman, so. I think that ship has long sailed. What am I doing? You're just standing Move, there, Michael. you're admiring the, the textures. The lighting. The, those beautiful textures. The fact that you can actually uh, rotate this game on, in 360 degrees with the camera, and it doesn't get stuck on walls! Mm -hmm. Like another... Like another... Like another 3D platformer oh. that has a mascot yeah, in you, it. You're talking about how this was your first game? My first game was Mario 64. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ryan's coughing up blood. Ugh. Oh god, it's rendered in 480i! Ugh. No, <laughs> oh, that game is 240p though. Oh no, I'm talking about the blood that I just coughed up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Oh, 480i. At least you the DS version is good. for so long, but now you are completely unwatchable. <laughs> I think it's just fine, but then again, I'm not a I'm not a tech head. Uh, wait, what did you call me, boy? Say whatever you say, Eggman! Yeah. Uh, so I should mention... A uh, reason- part, part of the reason we're playing on Dreamcast is... There's kind of a story behind it. Uh, Ryan <laughs> wanted to play this game... Ryan wanted to play this game on... On Versecast. And he wanted to do the Dreamcast version. Uh, but Ryan does not have the fancy $80 VGA box that I have. I am a scrub. Nor a way to re Yeah, and nor, <laughs> nor a way to record with VGA. Uh, so I, I made him a deal. I said, I, I'm probably gonna do this game on EPG Plays at some point. Maybe I could do the Dreamcast version there, and then you can do, you know, some other version for Inversecast later. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like probably <laughs> S better SADX is your... Yeah. Your plan. Yeah. Better as you uh, <coughs> For Steve. Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about that in a second, but as the, the level opens up here, I wanted to draw attention to something. There are these chameleon enemies in this game. I think they're called Leons. I'm not really sure. I'm trying mm -hmm. to find him. He, uh, it's almost like he's they're invisible. There, see? Oh! Oh! Uh, see? Oh. He... 
yeah, so you, as you can see, he shot his tongue out at us. At us. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's worth noting because uh, the GameCube version runs at 60 FPS. Uh, but if you know anything about um, timings and uh, clocking and frame rates and all that kind of stuff, is that uh, every everything in the game is kind of clocked around the frame rate. And because the the Dreamcast version runs at 30 frames per second, there's a life up here, but I somehow managed to miss it. Uh, because of this. how the time, like because of how the the AI for that. Uh, chameleon bad Nick is programmed um, it's it's clocked to 30 frames per second so when and the GameCube version later on when you go to 60 frames per second um, uh, supposedly the the game runs so fast that it doesn't have time to actually attack you huh like because of because of the way like the attack cycles are programmed on the enemy like uh, the game is running essentially twice as fast so it doesn't have enough time to actually attack you before it disappears again. 